Hey everyone, we're going to take a look at building a RESTful API using Node.js and Happy Framework. If you've been keeping up with my videos in the past, you'll remember that we did a similar uh, thing where we used Node.js and Express Framework. Uh, this time we're just changing it up with a different framework. And there are a lot of different frameworks out there. Um, I'm not going to say which one's the best. That's really up for you to, de to decide. Um, but I've recently taken preference in Happy lately. Um, so you'll notice that I do have my terminal up and running. I also do have Node.js installed. We're going to start by creating a fresh project somewhere on our computer. So in my case, it's going to be on my desktop. So I'm going to say make directory. I'm going to call it happy project. I'm going to navigate into happy project. Um, and right now it's just an empty directory. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say npm init hyphen y. So if I look at my project, uh, my project only has a package.json file in it. And that's from the npm init. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to create a file that will hold all of our node code. Uh, this is going to be called app.js. You can create it however you wish. I'm actually going to be creating it for my terminal. So I'm going to say touch app.js. Uh, and you can tell that it is now inside of my project. Before we can start developing our application, we do need to install our dependencies. Uh, so in this case, we only have one dependency as of now. So we're going to say npm install happy. I want to say hyphen hyphen save. The hyphen hyphen save uh, adds it to our package.json file. So if we ever want to do an npm install on a different machine or whatever the case may be, um, we can actually install all of our dependencies. Whereas leaving it off, um, doing an npm install, it will not be installed. Uh, we also do want a develop, uh, development dependency. Um, this will allow us to watch our project for changes and restart our server automatically. Uh, it is a convenience dependency. Um, so feel free to not do it if you don't want to. But I am going to say npm install nodemon hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev. And this is, this is great when it comes to uh, development. All right, so with all of our dependencies ready to go and our, our app.js file created, let's go ahead and open our project in whatever editor uh, you have preference in. My preference is Atom by GitHub, um, but like I said, uh, any will work. So with our project open, let's go ahead and set up Nodemon, um, get that out of the way. So if you open up your package.json file and you go to the scripts area, we're gonna create a new script. We're gonna call it a start script. And you don't have to use the npm scripts. It's just uh, more convenient rather than having to go all the way to find the nodemon path and then run it manually. Um, so with the script, we can say dot slash node modules, which is our local node modules. Nodemon slash bin slash nodemon.js. And it's actually going to run our app.js file. And we can hit save. Now let's go into our app.js file. And we can start developing our project. So we can say constant happy equals require happy. We can say constant server equals new happy dot server. And then we want to configure that server. So we want to say server dot connection. And we want to define the connection information. Uh, so one would be, well, what host is it going to operate on? So the host is going to be localhost. The port, let's go ahead and say that it's going to run on port 3000. Now there's other stuff we can add to this con uh, connection information, um, like what we want to do with cross-origin resource sharing uh, or other things. We're not going to worry about it for this example. Uh, we're only going to focus on uh, well, defining our very basic connection information. With the connection information defined, let's go ahead and say server.start. We're going to say uh, what happens if there's an error. We're going to be able to catch it. So we're going to say if error, throw error. So it's going to throw the error and stop our application. Otherwise, we're going to say console.log. We're going to say listening at. And then we can say uh, server.info.uri. So that's going to tell us our host and our port. And we can hit save. Um, so let's go ahead and run that, see where we stand so far. So going back into our terminal. We're going to say npm start, and it will start listening at our server. The problem with this right now is, well, we don't have any endpoints created for our API. So we don't have any routes. If, if we try to access 
uh, localhost port 3000, it's going to return a 404 error. And we can validate that by going to Postman. So Postman is the tool that we're going to be using for testing our API, uh, since we won't have a client in this example. Uh, there are other tools. You can use Fiddler. Uh, I'm sure others exist as well. Uh, Postman is my preference. So we're going to say HTTP localhost port 3000. And we're going to do a send. And you can see 404 not found, which is exactly what we anticipated. So let's go back into our project. We're going to create that very first endpoint. So we're going to say server.route. We're going to say uh, the method is going to be a get request. The path is going to be at the root. So localhost 3000 will get us to this endpoint. And then we're going to define what's going to happen uh, when we want to handle the request. So we're going to define a handler. It's going to have request information as well as access to the response information. So we're not going to worry about the request information as of now. Uh, we're only going to send a very simple response. So we're going to say response, hello world, and save. Uh, now uh, Nodemon uh, is automatically restarting our server for us, so we don't have to worry about anything. We're going to go to Postman. We're going to say uh, send our request again. This time around, we got a hello world. So not, not incredibly useful, nothing that we're actually going to be doing uh, in real life. So let's go ahead and maybe cra uh, create a real life scenario here. Uh, so again, we're not going to be using a database in this, in this uh, example. Uh, we're going to be using mock data, uh, but it should give you a good idea on what you can accomplish. So server.route, we're going to create another route. This one's going to have a method get as well. The path this time is going to be slightly different. So the path is going to be a count, and then we're going to have a URL uh, route parameter, so username. So this is a dynamic variable that ends up in your URL bar. We're going to have a handler, a request and a response, and we're going to say, well, what's, what's going to happen here? So first of all, let's go ahead and say var account mock equals empty object. Um, so the, the goal here is if the username matches our hard-coded value, uh, so the, the username that was passed matches something we hard-code, return some actual data. If it doesn't match, just return this empty object. Um, and this is kind of the logic that you would have for a database, um, but it'd be a little more dynamic than this. So we're going to say if request dot params dot username equals and we're boy then we're going to do this and inside of here we're going to say account mock equals and we're going to give it some new values so we're going to say username and we're boy password one two three four we're going to give it a twitter and we're boy and we're going to give it a website. So this is all fake information. It might be something that you would expect in a, an account uh, when you want to access account information. Who knows? You can put whatever you want here. Um, the, the, the example here is identifying a URL parameter uh, and then returning data based on that. Um, so if everything adds up, uh, let's go ahead and say response account mock. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So we're going to go back into Postman. We're going to go to account and we're boy. So we're going to hit a match and hit send. And it returned that account mock. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we when we enter something incorrectly for the username. Send. We get an empty object. So far, uh, so good. So that was a get request. Now let's go ahead and explore the option. Well, what if we want to do a post request? What happens if we want to create data? Because when you do a get request, that means we're, we're getting information. Posting means we're, we're adding information. Put is update. Uh, there's a whole lot of different options. But we're going to say server.route method post path. This time the path is going to be account if we want to follow good API practice and the handler request response and then the same the same trend that we've been doing the whole time so inside the handler uh, we want to say response and we want to say request dot payload 
Uh, so this is a little different. So previously we saw request.params uh, for URL parameters. This time request.payload is the JSON body that you would typically submit with a post request. Uh, so this is the data body, or in this case, the payload. Uh, so let's go ahead and save it. We're gonna go to Postman. We're going to hit the account endpoint. We're gonna make it a post request. And we're going to add a body. It's gonna be raw and it's gonna be of type application JSON. So let's go ahead and add a first name, last name, and let's just call it a day at that. So I'll submit it. And you'll notice that it sent uh, back the payload. So that's all we had it do is we, we took in a payload and we returned that same exact payload. Uh, so as of right now, um, we're not doing anything incredibly useful, uh, but we do have some very well-made uh, APIs created, our API endpoints. Now what we want to get into is the realm of uh, data validation. So when data comes in, we want to validate that it's ex what we expect. We don't want extra um, parameters coming through. We don't want parameters incorrectly formatted. We want to have full control with minimal effort. And this is one of the things that I like probably most about Happy um, is, is its validators. So what we will need is we will need to go back to our terminal. We're going to stop our application and we're going to say npm install because we're installing the validation package. It's called joy, J-O-I. And then we're going to say hyphen hyphen save. We're going to restart our server. And we're going to scroll back to the top of our application and we're going to say constant joy equals require joy. So let's go ahead and add some validation to that post request that we just did. So we want to validate some things. So underneath path, go ahead and add config. Config is an object that has a lot of different features. Like you can, you can specify what the expected payload is like, um, what size of payload is allowed, things like that. In this case, we want to validate the payload or any, any kind of variable that comes in the request. It's going to be an object and we're going to say payload, which is also an object. Payload can be swapped out for things like query uh, or uh, params, basically anything that comes in as the request. So for payload, we're going to say first name. We're going to say joy. We're expecting a string and we're saying that it has to be required. We're going to do the same thing with the last name and I forgot a comma. So last name joy.string.required and then we're going to throw a curveball in here. We're going to say timestamp. This time we're going to say it's of type any, but it's going to be forbidden. So this means if a timestamp property is in our payload, an error will be thrown. But if it's not, we want to default it to a value. So we're going to default it to a new date and we're going to get the time. So in, th in reality, we're just going to be storing a Unix timestamp. So that's our validation. So if we go back down to our, our handler, our payload should have a timestamp in it when we run it. So let's go ahead and save it. Uh, we're going to say, let's first of all, let's remove the last name, make sure it runs correctly. We're going to hit send. Uh, could not get a response, so we, we have some kind of error that we didn't anticipate. Probably a typo on my part. Unexpected identifier, handler. Uh, my guess is I forgot a comma. I did forget a comma, so let's go ahead and add that in. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to Postman and run it. Uh, and this time we have a, a better error, not one because I've made a typing mistake. This time it says a last name is required. So let's go ahead and add the last name in. And we're also going to add the timestamp. And we're just going to say 1234 and hit send. This time around, it says it failed because the timestamp is not allowed. So let's remove the timestamp. Hit send. Uh, this time it returned a response with the valid timestamp. Uh, so, so far, so good. So if we go back into our code, uh, you just saw that you, you could validate the payload before you won't need any kind of if conditions or any kind of switch statements, anything that would add excessive amounts of code uh, to your project. And that's that's part of the, the benefits of happy and joy is everything is very slick and minimal.
Now let's say that I wanted to add something else. Let's say I wanted to validate for query parameters as well. So let's go ahead and add query. And in here, let's say we have a query parameter called alert. It could be whatever we want. Let's say joy string. Now let's actually say joy boolean. So we're expecting a true or for false value. And then we're going to say the default is going to be false. Now joy has a, a ton of documentation, very good documentation on all the things that it can do. Like, is it going to be an email address? Is it a string, boolean, date? Uh, wh whatever, whatever you can think up, there's probably some kind of validator in joy for you. But let's go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead, uh, we, we don't have it in the payload, so let's go ahead and just print it to the logs. We're gonna say request.query, save it. Let's go ahead and go to our postman. We're gonna run it. It ran. Let's go look at our logs. It says alert is false. Uh, so let's go ahead and edit that in postman now. So we go to uh, account, we say uh, we want to add a query parameter and we say alert equals true and send it. We go back into our logs, it says alert equals true. Um, so it was very it was very easy to accomplish that. Um, we don't we don't have too much code here. We have about 60 lines. Uh, a lot of it is complete nonsense code, uh, but it gives you an idea on well, how do you make get endpoints? How do you make post endpoints? How do you validate your data? Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to explore how to uh, use a database instead of mock data. But in reality, it's not it's not much different than what we've already seen here. So you can do a whole lot of stuff with Happy with, with very minimal effort.